Radio 2. Mm. Big summer ticket. Yes. OK, I'm just repeating things now. <laughs> Gordon yeah. Ramsay is here with us, ladies and gentlemen. Gordon Ramsay, are you, have you been on at all, Gordon? I've forgotten whether or not you have anything on the... Because <laughs> you should... I'm just... No, having, I haven't. I, no, no, no. You no. haven't? No, I haven't. Oh, no. Congratulations, okay. by the way. Great Thank news. Thank you very much indeed. Thank uh-huh. you. Is that a reason now to get your hair cut? Uh, oh, <laughs> see, actually, I should get a trim, shouldn't I? I think you should trim it a little bit, yes. Because your, your hair... Actually, you've got a nice <laughs> tassel just out of bed look going on there. <laughs> he's like... He's very really boyish. I had a late night last night. I didn't so, get back to that. If you put two. plus fours on, you look like Tintin. <laughs> and that's not a bad look. Get a little white dog. Thank you. Get a bloke in the kitchen. Captain, no, ba- Captain Barnacle. With no balls. <laughs> Captain Haddock. Oh. <laughs> have you ever done... Could you do? What could you have done with them if I'd have given them to you? Um, pickled them, maybe. No. You look like you don't pickle, gooseberries. Do you pickle testicles? <laughs> you do cook testicles with some animals, though, don't you? Confit them in goose fat. Which animals do you cook? Pigs' testicles? Um, pigs yeah, testicles? pigs. Um, pigs' bladder, pigs' heart, you, pigs' ears, you, pigs' trotters. Filthy animal. Pigs' balls. Uh, now, I've had... <laughs> Pig trotters. Delicious. And surprisingly nice. Yeah. Delicious. I had them cooked by Marco Pierre White. He's Amazing. Actually, he's a great cook. He's he? a great chef. I think he's the best cook in the country. <laughs> is he? You would agree, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable cook. What he, he can do with a chip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he, that was his um, famous dish, the um, braised pig trotter. Braised for about yeah. six and a half, seven hours. I had stuff one. Like. He cooked one for me once. It was fantastic. Amazing stuff with sweetbreads uh, and uh, morel mushrooms. Amazing. Uh, Marvellous. Now, Gordon is uh, obviously on our television at the moment, if you're watching Channel 4, and I, I think it's a virtually unmissable show, yep, Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. This week I caught the first half of it mm-hmm. and then I was doing a gig this week. I was uh, going on stage hosting the wall show and I, I had to phone the wife and said, please, Jane, <laughs> please, can you take the second half? I want to see what happens with the Mama's Soul Food Kitchen when yes. he goes back in, whether or not they turn it around or not, because mm. that's the great point. Yeah. Uh, how many have you done in the series? Is it six, um, six, yeah. Six. And right, have you yeah. finished them all? Or are you um, still... All finished and just about to start series three, right. so uh, wow. really good news. And, um, it's, and it's being shown in the States now? Yeah, it's gone up to BBC America. Um, yeah. Starts again on 21st of June this month. Um, yeah, great. Uh, it's almost like a bit of a sort of campaign to turn around the sort of provincial restaurants sort of up and down the country but um, last week Mama Show was amazing yeah um, she was a lovely um, character and yeah. they were all nice people working with her they're amazing but uh, a bit misguided slightly lazy yeah, um, yeah. taking their job for granted and sort of taking her for granted in a way fostered 32 children um, you have no <laughs> she <laughs> well, you've been busy since last week <laughs> and no, she... way, you just rocked it in the conversation like that no she had fostered 32 oh, children oh, and oh, tried to run a restaurant woman. as well at the same time amazing woman she reminded me so much of Rusty Lee remember Rusty Lee mm. Rusty Lee who got done I believe for showing um, products on TVAM oh, <laughs> taking a small back <laughs> <laughs> I believe, I'm not sure, I think that was the case, but um, right. if it wasn't, but I like Rossidy, she had that big laugh, didn't she? Oh, amazing. Yeah, she was amazing. If you get a chance to go, go down to the Soul Food Shack, because it's just... It, just in one of the back streets of Brighton, Yeah, just it? off the coast, just off the sort of beach. Uh, and is it doing well since the series? Because they did seem to really turn it around. Yeah. And, the, and the fella she had working, the guy who had uh, the little baby, and yes, he had like nanny right. problems and nurse, nursery yeah. problems, he uh, he seemed like a pretty good yeah. chef as well. Like, uh, he very good chef. Doing. I mean, again, needed a boot up the backside, but only had 25 seats, and um, two Saturdays ago, for the first time, ever they've done 120 guests so wow great news so that's a what a turnaround that is great news uh what more than one person per chair <laughs> <laughs> people on there it must have been because i want to do 120 well, you no, the three sittings sittings the, yeah, that's right they, that's they 75 opened, yeah no no but they sort of opened up from like four o'clock in the afternoon and sort well, of oh so really turns, cramming them in cramming them that's in. Fantastic. fantastic news so she's pres- queuing up outside the door to get presumably them. she'll get she'll start breaking even soon then because she was behind financially wouldn't she yeah and only 200 quid a week for goodness how tough it is though, that's what one of the things i think is, is marvelous about the show is you realize how tough it is for people out there running their own business trying to make it work juggling yep. dealing with the realities of actually turning up and motivating themselves and their people and working really hard and then dealing with bank managers yep. and, and then trying to get people to come in. I mean, what a, it is a tough old life that it's they a very choose tough for themselves. Life, yeah. and, and, and certainly the Monday to Thursday, um, a lot of Russians survive purely on just Friday, Saturday trade, but um, it's incredible to see that Russian empty Monday to Thursday. So we had to come up with an idea of sort of generate a little bit more interest, a lot of students down there, of course, and that's why we came up with Soul in a Bowl at uh, £10 a Topless night. <laughs> That's surely you thought of that first. <laughs> Mama topless in the kitchen. Actually, I'll be there probably three or four nights a week and lunch. Hey? And pay more than ten quid a head. Oh, lovely jambalayas. <laughs> um, it's tough, though, running a restaurant, isn't it? I mean, it's like, even I would have thought at your level, when you've got a restaurant, you have to make sure that people yeah. don't get complacent, they don't, the standards don't slip. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's, I don't know, for some bizarre reason, everyone thinks it's a bit of a glamorous issue out there, but it's not. It's graft and it's, um, it's, it's tough, 15, 16 hours a day. I get scared looking at how hard the people work in the kitchen. I mean, it's like, you because suddenly there's all these orders coming, they've got to, I know they know how to cook, they've got to cook them quickly yeah. and then there's little bits of paper hanging up, you've yeah. got to make sure everything's on the list. And, no, exactly. Oh, it's Those horrible. little bits of paper, is that's your guidance. I mean, it's just like your script, your, uh, yeah. your notes, but... Um, yeah, my script. Like, can I ever work from a script properly? I'm incapable of doing anything consistently. Um, but that, presumably, that's something, once again, once you've mastered it, is it yeah. it's not as intimidating as it looks to us from the outside. No, it's in the memory. When we call out an order um, in my kitchen, for instance, with a new cook, first thing we do is turn the ticket um, upside down. 
so they can't actually see the order. So they get to sort of practice memorising between their ears know what four or five doing. tables, know what they're doing. There and must course, be times when they miss one, though. Yeah, absolutely, but then you just give them a gentle sort of reminder, kick, kick at the back. Kick the <laughs> and flatten them with a removal of parts. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that scheme, seriously? I thought it was a great idea. Yes, yeah, it is, Better than it? tagging them, put it that way. <laughs> well, what's the point of tagging them? They're only going to run away and do it again. Exactly. Off with them. <laughs> Pickles and then, and if they don't learn, take a limb. Yeah, there is a magazine called... <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? I'm sure Kilroy would agree with me. Oh, There's nothing no. wrong with it. Oh, dear. That's right, let's get radical. <laughs> um, <that's, laughs> Gordon Ramsay is with us, ladies and gentlemen. He also has a book out at the moment called Makes It Easy. Gordon Ramsay makes it easy. Mm. Because when you look at you cooking, when you look at the level of food that, that you would serve, no doubt, and even the way you deal with these professionals mm-hmm. in the restaurants, because Kitchen Nightmare is about people who are maybe not doing it right, but they're still professionals. No, very much so, Of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, but there, there are those of us out there who like the idea of cooking lovely food. It's intimidating. It is quite uh, a challenge, I guess. And th- that would be the purpose of this book. Would that be right? Um, yeah. Um, I'm getting rid-, rid of that intimidation. I'm making it sort of a bit more um, easy. Yeah. Um, and not getting overcomplicated with sort of herbs and red wine sauces and having to spend three or four days in the kitchen before you actually perfect the dinner. See, that's what I... I mean, my wife's a very, very good cook. She uh-huh. really is. But sometimes, you know, she'll start preparing early in the day. And I think, well, can't we just do it all in the evening? Now, yeah. I know that's me being simplistic. Sure. But certainly there are some times when I think, I don't know whether the the amount of work that goes in is really mm-hmm. worth the fun yeah. we have at the end. Yeah, true. Um, do you know the best way of holding a dinner party is get your friends um, to bring a course. So you just concentrate on doing either the main course, the start or the dessert, and you know make it throw it out to them. Yeah, but some of my friends, <laughs> <laughs> you really wouldn't want to eat. Well. I mean, some of them I don't even wash much. You know. <laughs> It's like David Badil, he's listening at home right now, you know? <laughs> he come up with some Middle Eastern dish that, you know... Couscous. You only have on Shoboth or something. You know? and it's like, well, I don't want to be there. Whatever, Dave. No, but the exciting things to do. And, and, you know, I think for me the most important thing is keeping it simple and just making sure that you sort of spend money on the ingredients because the better the ingredients, the little it needs doing. Fresh ingredients. Exactly. Yeah, I love a bit of steak. Yeah. Yeah, so are you. Are you a pink man or medium well? How dare you. <laughs> <laughs> And with Pride Week coming up. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your, what is your all-time favourite meal, either when you prepared yourself or when you've had prepared for you? Yeah, um, I love um, cooking fish. Um, roasted sea bass, salmon bed of crusty sea potatoes. Sea bass is a lovely, delicate fish. It's an amazing mm. fish. It's sadly overfished now in this country, and um, we've got problems with this sort of the line court scenario. But, um, you know, it's sea bass, cod. With the mustard lentils. The cod's kind of <laughs> a bit over 50. I know, and endangered species again. Um, it's a great shame. Whiting, um, hand dive scallops. Um, we've got the most amazing produce. Do you like an oyster? I love oysters. I love an oyster. But not, not cooked, raw. Raw, of course, raw, yeah, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> what are you going to cook them for? <laughs> you could lightly grill them or fry them. Not in my presence, <laughs> you couldn't. How many oysters can you swallow at the same time? Uh, at the same time, yes. I would imagine three or four. Three or four. OK, but I could, get, I could eat my way through about 50 in a sitting. Serious. Here's... Now, listen. <laughs> I've eaten at Ramsay's gaff. Okay. Yeah, so have I. I said, gaff, not calf. He hasn't opened a calf. <laughs> Although that would probably be a good step forward, wouldn't it? Maybe, one D- day. For the working man. <laughs> what, a roadside boy? Gordon Ramsay's, a lovely egg and butter in the morning, two slices of toast, cup of tea, £3.50. Can't go wrong. Each bean hand-washed by Gordon. <laughs> and gently massaged. Um... I've been to places. F- incredible food, OK? Yep. I always have... I suppose it's a taster menu, is it? It's the one yes, where you've been right, lots yeah. of little bits. Yeah, menu prestige. Incredible, because you get to try all this stuff. However, in some ways, not satisfying. Really? Too small? Well, because I went to the Fat Duck this week. Oh, OK. okay which is the restaurant in Bray. <laughs> fantastic restaurant where you get... And it's been... People say it's the best restaurant mm-hmm. in the world. And it is incredible. It's Even amazing. Though, I hate hearing this kind of adjective used about food, but it is. You would call it witty. Yeah, very I witty. Guess, yeah. You know, but it, and it's lovely. However, and we had loads of stuff, and. But at the end, I thought, you know what, though? I've, ate, I've eaten those... I miss that feeling where you're almost in pain <laughs> from suddenly eating loads of chips and a big bit of lobster. Yeah. And I like that. As a man, I like that. Mm-hmm. And I miss that with the, let's call the higher-end food, yeah. la di Yeah. And um, what did you have? I had, I had the menu where you try, taste everything. Everything. I had the snail porridge. <laughs> I don't agree with snail eating. <laughs> I find it really unpleasant, but I ate it so as to be polite. Yes. And I tried to pretend they were mushrooms. Right. Okay? <laughs> but why would you want to eat a snail? What's he thinking cooking snails? What's he think he's doing? What about the smoked bacon ice cream? I like the smoked bacon ice lovely, cream. Lovely, lovely. That was nice. It's a clever idea. I like the little sherbet dib-dab you get at the end. Yep, great fun. You get a sherbet dib-dab. Do you? Yeah. And you get a little thing you put in your mouth that tastes a bit like wood to get your mouth ready for the truffles. That's right. And like, they do that chocolate mousse and, and when you sort of bite into it it's got that space dust in the it's middle. It's got space dust at the bottom. Fantastic. It's marvellous. I had a bit of pigeon. 
Did you? I think I probably ate everything that walks. <laughs> <laughs> I think you get a little bit of everything, apart from long pig. <laughs> they don't cook that anymore. People complained. Um, all right, so well, let's play another track. Gordon, would I be right in thinking... Because you're from Scotland, aren't you? That's right, yeah, Johnson. So, Proclaimers, favourite band? Oh, great group. You look like you could be in the Proclaimers. <laughs> if we got Gordon a set of glasses, it yeah. could be the extra Proclaimer. It <laughs> could be. We don't I haven't have got the Proclaimers. Three, three, three's a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping to find out one day, but the wife keeps saying no. Um, what are we going to buy? I was going to play the Walker Brothers. Oh, oh, fantastic. There you go. Love the Walker Brothers. I thought that was Scott on his own, but that was no, the Walker Brothers. The Walker Brothers. Uh, Gordon Ramsay is with us. Uh, he's got a new book out called Makes It Easy, which I've been browsing to at home, and it also comes with a DVD. Yes. Which is a great uh, help, because really, you often, books are tremendous as far as they go but sure. sometimes you can't be seeing someone do it yeah it was amazing how Obviously. you sort of depend on things like pictures but coming up with the idea of the DVD again let's just take that little bit step further and made yeah. it sort of more interesting for them and on the extra section there's a kind of there's a little <laughs> bit of Gordon at home relaxing oh is there yeah just relaxing in shorts <laughs> it's for the ladies mainly oh I see but it's like he looks slightly Germanic in it they're leather shorts right <laughs> and I would have thought you wouldn't want to cook in that kind of gear but apparently no. it's okay he's got braces <laughs> oh behave <laughs> and boots and boots he yeah. looks like he's been drawn by Tom of Finland <laughs> if you get that reference, then God bless you. Um, uh, when, when, how long have you been cooking for professionally? I mean, um, started at 19 now, 38 now, 39 at the end of the year. So, you so come, 20 come years. 20 solid years. Yeah. 20 years in 20 the years. Um, and how long was it before you got really good, do you think? As you know, it started off with Marco, uh, which was an amazing uh, platform, then on to the Rue Brothers, and then um, it really started coming alive when I went off to France and living in Paris for two years in the south of France for a year. So you, because you actually learned to speak French so you could work yeah, and study there, didn't you? very much so. That's uh, real and that was because of your dedication to... to yeah, and just fell in love with them, really, in the way that what they did and how much respect they had for it and just... The idea of you know being in Paris at the age of 22 and going down to patisserie and, and buying a fresh croissant and fresh baguette for breakfast and then coming home and having a fresh baguette again. A word that crops up a lot in conversation with you on your shows is fresh. Okay? Mm -hmm. you're, talking, you're always maintaining the fresh quality, the the you know yep. the newness of the yep. item that you get. That's that's crucial. That's key. yeah. The ingredients go past that little bit of sort of magical moment um, when they're gone past the sell-by date, and it's almost like you know cooking fish. There's no medium, rare, or well done. It's that real critical precise moment and ingredients every answer ingredient you know across the world has that little magic moment say we look in your fridge and there's the usual stuff you know you've got the M&S ready meals right you've got the, the Jamie Oliver kid stuff right ready to bung in the microwave if the sell by date was today how many days after that do you consider it's okay still to eat it so um, within 24 hours well my mum maintains four or five days <laughs> yeah. she always used to say that there, there was a built in period where they, they would do that because they knew you weren't going to throw it out then yeah it's like four or five days afterwards yeah. I think as long as it doesn't look like it's wilting inside the pack <laughs> right? or it doesn't smell terrible and you're, but, you can probably still eat it but I want to get myself in a situation where um, you know I never got intimidated by any ingredient across the world whether it's a head of celeriac or whether it's the golden caviar taken from the albino sturgeon um, wow. something unique and, that's and, something from Harry Potter so, <laughs> <laughs> no it's this almost like white sort of um, lightly sort of um, sort of almost like platinum um, caviar wow. from the albino sturgeon and Amazing. that must be incredibly expensive yeah, incredible so when you're working with that, then you're working with something which, if you mess it up, that's, yeah, that's uh, a, like, a, for one person a month's wages. Yeah, right? big time, especially in Paris, because you don't go there to earn money. Wow. You go there to sort Does of it earn actually a taste any different it's to It's amazing. Caviar? Yeah, amazing. Very, very delicate, very soft. And You never feel sad for the baby animals that are going to follow and pass around because you have cruelly <laughs> taken them from their mother's womb and put them on a bed of parsley? Says he who's just pickled his dog's bollocks. <laughs> it's not the, yeah, but the dogs are right. Oh, I suppose you're right. I, I have preempted a new generation exactly of Exactly that. You've just deprived him of so much pleasure, for goodness sake. Well, no, I still, you know, <laughs> give him a little rub occasionally on the tummy. <laughs> oh, that's fine. On the tummy. Yeah, deep heat him. Yeah, <laughs> poor little fella, <laughs> eh? Um, but, but presumably when you're working with ingredients of that quality, you know, mm -hmm. how do you learn? I mean, how do you teach someone to work yeah. with that? Because the risk is that they're going to mess it up, and that's an yeah. expensive learning curve. No, no, good question. Um, in this country, we're very lucky with the seasonality. As you know, fresh asparagus, strawberries just come in. Um, what I do for um, young cooks, uh, the first job always is to give them a bowl of trimmings and how they handle those bowl of trimmings is extraordinary if they can come up with something really exciting on a bowl of trimmings when they get to the real ingredient they're going to treat it with the utmost so like respect. the off cut the fatty yep. stuff around the edge of the steak yep. the sort of, stuff. of trimmings the asparagus peelings the sort of um tails of the fish um, the, the rows of the scallop um, the tentacles of the squid. Yes. Um, and <laughs> yes, I'm as you well know, squid cooking. Um, and, and what they come up with within that sort of 45 minute um, period um, is extraordinary. And, and what is the best meal that one of your young people has cooked for you with just off cuttings? Um, I mean, do you eat it? You just yeah, sample it. Yeah, funny enough, a vegetarian dish, would you believe, um, about three weeks ago, and it was done with um, white and green asparagus uh, trimmings. They made a, the most amazing sort of broth, um, wow, vegetable broth, lovely. and it was delicious. Clean, very healthy, and just the perfect way of starting a lunch. I like an omelette. 
<laughs> Do you like omelets? You always lower the tone. <laughs> oh, what's lowering the tone there? How dare you? An omelette is you I'm cook not... an omelette. Trying to cook an omelette, Whitey side. Look, we'll talk about omelettes after the news, all right? Maybe there'll be some news <laughs> on about <the> omelettes <laughs> on the... coming up now. 88 and 81 FM, this is Radio 2 from the BBC. Well, omelettes, OK? <laughs> now, here's the thing. That's the gorillas. Of course it was. That's the new single from the gorillas. That's great. Omelettes. There's a, there's a mail order cattling get called Scots of Stowe. Are you familiar with that, Gordon? Uh, not oh, really, no. I, 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 I Sorry. get sent it. It's no, good okay. stuff. You get good stuff in there. I'm going to order a lot from the new catalogue. Is there an omelette pan in there? There's an omelette pan in there. I just saw yeah. the other day. I got quite excited about Go on. Which has got a hinge in it. <laughs> a hinge? You want to get one, Gordon. You want to get some for all your restaurants. You put the eggs in, yeah. right, cook one sock. You know how hard it is to flip an omelette? You clip the lid over, you just turn the pan over. <laughs> it's that enough and you just cook the other side. How easy is that's that going to make your life? That's pathetic. Don't this say is, that. You, you, just, you would like one. Just fold it like an envelope. Keep no, it a little bit running in the centre. Don't do that. Use a new pan. <laughs> <laughs> you do it, all the work's gone out of it. What's so, what's so flash about what you do? No, no, but just fold it nicely, and like an envelope, and then you're put your filling in. You're like, you're <laughs> turning your back on the new technology. <laughs> and then get the plate and put it over the pan and tip the pan onto the plate. I love an omelette. Don't you like an omelette? I do like an omelette, yeah. yeah. I like an omelette. An, an omelette with asparagus in is lovely. Or a Spanish omelette, an open omelette. Mm, Delicious. No, Why not the Spanish omelette? Yeah, lovely. <laughs> It's too much in the Spanish omelette. Why? Too many ingredients in the Spanish omelette. <laughs> an omelette with some You have potato in it, it. in it, you have peppers in it, don't you? That's right, yeah. What onions, else do you have in it? Onions, onions. onions. too cheese. much, too much, <laughs> too much. You Are should you know some restraint. Egg this, white oh, omelette man I'm only. Quite, if I'm, when I'm trying to lose weight. <laughs> but I like a nice omelette with asparagus. That's all you need. <laughs> What's wrong? Me and S- Prince Charles. Snob. <laughs> you and Prince Charles? <laughs> a bit of salmon on top. <laughs> um... OK, uh, I, I'm not a terribly good cook, but I went through a period where I, I tried cooking for a while, mm-hmm. and I learned how to blanch a tomato. Why were you blanching them? Because I was making a tomato pasta sauce. That's fresh. a very long-winded way of making a tomato sauce. Well, man. I wanted to take the skin off. Is that not yeah, what you should do? Not really, no, because there's a great flavour in the skin. Well, this um, recipe the book I out. had, that's what it said. It said, oh, really? take the skin off, you see. And Whose so book I was that? I don't know. It was, some, it wasn't even a name book. It was one of it said how to cook a pasta sauce or something. But you see, I wouldn't imagine you taking the skin off a tomato, John. Well, I only did it the once. <laughs> but you could just use plum tomatoes, can't you? Use... Exactly. Well, exactly. I thought plum tomatoes... See, plum tomatoes, they grow that shape, don't they? Yeah, that's yeah. called plum I tomatoes. didn't know that, because when I bought plum tomatoes when I was a kid, I thought they'd just got long in the pan. <laughs> I thought, because they were all squashed in, they'd, gr- they'd, got, they'd gone that way, and I thought, that's, isn't that weird that that could happen? Taking and I was <laughs> really disappointed when I met a real plum tomato and said, oh, you're that shape to begin with. Taking the seeds out uh, is important, but leaving the skin on is fine, especially for tomato sauce. I like mm. really hot food as well. Really? Now, that is something I imagine as a chef, you would be a little bit reluctant to put on someone's plate, because it kind of, it isn't the finer flavour, and you can't really tell all the qualities. Yeah, you? I mean, especially with Thai food, always in, um, Indian, um, it sort of doesn't destroy the palate, but it just like Dead bursts it, it. yeah, Dead straight it. away. So you've got that numbness for the next two and a half hours. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm not into that hot of food to be honest. If I was coming to restaurant, do you recommend a cigar in between courses to, to <laughs> spark up the palate? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be eating on the terrace, mate. If you did that. No, maybe after somewhere sort of down the end of the bar, but definitely not in between courses. Not no. in between courses. No, it's not so good for you. No. Um, uh, do you enjoy cooking still, or do you prefer now the other aspects of your life, the broadcasting and the kind of overseeing of a, a growing empire and teaching? Yeah, no, I think for me, um, what's become really apparent over the last three or four years uh, is the teaching. And when you look at the young chefs we've got, you know, female and male, um, the talent coming through and nursing them and sort of propelling them to greater heights, um, teaching is a big aspect. I've got to continue that. Um, cooking, well, I've got to also continue keep one foot in the kitchen. Uh, that's paramount. But um, you've got to be creative. And your customers never tell you that you're boring. They just disappear to another restaurant. So yeah, yeah, you've yeah. got to stay on top of that. And, you know, I'm very much in the kitchen. We both have a lot to give um, to <laughs> the younger generation. <laughs> Why are you laughing at? <laughs> We're both top of our game, and we should make sure that we don't die and take this knowledge with us to the yeah, grave. Yeah. Okay, we need to. We should, but we should set up a school of broadcasting and cooking together. R- Asparagus omelets. Yeah. You do the lunches. <laughs> I do the afternoon entertainment. Right. <laughs> Can you imagine? We should. Why don't we become a gay couple and live together, at Golden White, and set up a little restaurant somewhere? Wouldn't it be a brilliant end to our lives? What should little, we call it? Yeah, we'd call it um, uh, Ramsey J- and Ross. JG's. JG's. JG's Bistro. Yeah. JG's. I'd love to, uh, yeah. I would love to see you in a kitchen. Yeah. Brighton, let's move to Brighton. Right? <laughs> we'll have an antique store down below and a little coffee shop up above. Yeah. We'll both wear little neckerchiefs. <laughs> Golden! <laughs> I need four more cream teas, love. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, it's all. 
<laughs> give me some jip ever since his back went. <laughs> and then we walk the dogs together. <laughs> what, what nicer future could there be for us? And your speciality would be with pig slaughter, right? I would do something with it. Um, <laughs> Gordon, we should just establish in case you're concerned, has three children. Okay, four. Four children. <laughs> you only said three. Did you forget about three one? Three girls. Yeah, three girls. All right. Oh, he doesn't like the boy. So um, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> joking. If you're listening, obviously he loves all these children. What lovely little children they appear to be. They're photographed from the book, and you're you're teaching them to cook as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you find that? Is it different teaching youngsters cook? Presumably you have to limit yeah. it to what, what schools they yeah. have. Yeah, no, I think every parent's nightmare is getting their sort of children off those sweet things and getting them onto the savoury. Um, uh, especially at the moment, with, yeah. you know, all the treats and snacks. Absolutely. Available. So the first thing we made was ketchup to get them away from that synthetic um, ketchup. Because the ketchup has so much sugar and yeah, salt in it, doesn't exactly it? Exactly that, and uh, all those E numbers. So, I mean, we had to come up with something a little bit more different. So they made a fresh tomato puree. Um, Megan didn't like spinach, so we made a potato and spinach soup. Holly didn't like um, salad, so we sort of made a, um, a, a normal salad. And um, you sort of disguise food for them and, and sort of get them sort of almost um, into a bit of a bargaining power with them. Yeah. That, you, know, you sort of teach them that way around. Uh, children often, certainly I'm speaking of from my own ones, they, they normally you can get them to try new things, providing it isn't too covered in sauces, it's yeah, exactly. too exotic. They'll yeah. try the actual ingredient yeah. itself, yeah. as long as it doesn't look like it's... it's yeah, exactly. Um, but it doesn't really sit that well in my house when they turn around and say, I don't really like Daddy. So anyway, so we disguise it. But uh, Megan had her first cookery lesson last week at school. And how old is Megan? Um, she's seven. Right. And um, this little, ten minutes into the lesson, <laughs> she put her hand up and the teacher said, yes, Megan. She said, um, Daddy said you almost must first of all, wash your hands before you start. <laughs> and teacher said, uh, yes, that's right, Megan, I forgot. So, uh, great news that wow. she's on the ball so early on. That is great. Not great news that the teacher's forgetting <laughs> something as fundamental as washing know, her know. bloody hands. I know, I know, I know. I know. That's not hard of me, Mama. Amazing. Um, Amazing. And just, do they enjoy cooking? They like doing it? I mean, presumably it's something when they do it with you. It's a lovely experience for them yeah. because Daddy's there. Yeah, especially at weekends. And, um, you yeah, know, they think Daddy's a cooker. But, I mean, they don't yeah, go to the cooker. restaurants. Yeah, a cooker. <laughs> they don't go to the restaurants. I don't want them to get that sort of no. over-involved with no. sort of food that early on. That's not good. So uh, we want to sort of protect them at that age. And if they want to go to one of the cafes with their friend's birthday party, then I don't want them turning out to be food snobs on their 10th birthday. Foodies, no. Uh, but children do love the experience of cooking their own food. There's a real Amazing. joy that they have of seeing something in its raw form and mm -hmm. then seeing yeah. that they can actually create it. Yeah, absolutely, especially cookies or cakes. Yeah. Um, Although biscuits are too hard for kids to cook. Are they? Yeah, biscuits. I can't cook biscuits. How can kids cook biscuits? Because biscuits, it's so hard to know how long they leave them in the bloody oven. Yeah, that's and true. then you get them out there too dry. Like, yeah. oh, I don't know. But the secret to cooking a biscuit is to go take it out five minutes before it's done because they continue cooking on the tray so they don't become dry. Well, now you tell me. <laughs> well, now you tell me. Well, why don't you put that in the book somewhere? <laughs> that's useful information. <laughs> Next time. No, never mind that, a blanch of tomato. That's what I need to know. <laughs> take your cookies out early. I'm amazed you take the skin off a tomato. I don't anymore. Will you stop going on about it? I did it once, all right? It was a mistake. I apologise. We all make them. Uh, what's the weirdest thing you've cooked, Gordon? Uh, weirdest thing I've cooked would have to be um, okra, ladies' fingers. Really? Yeah, they're just slimy. They, they do taste a bit slimy. I like a bit of okra. <laughs> I'll tell you what I love. Pickled okra. Really? No, it doesn't... I mean, great for ethnic cooking, definitely, but they sort of are there to substantiate and bulk up that kind of sort of um, Indian food. But as an individual vegetable, not really my favourite. Because favorite. They, when you cook them down, when you, because they have got a lot of liquid in them, an enzyme, it yeah. becomes kind of quite thick. It binds the sauce together, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, but you never tried the pickled okra? Um, no, not My for me. kids love it. Oh, really? They love pickled okra. They're not vegetarian, are they? No, no, but they love them. Don't yeah. say it like that. Was it sneer? No, just... Well, one of them is very vegetarian, actually. Really? My oldest daughter, she doesn't eat any But she eats fish? No, she really? doesn't eat fish, and she doesn't even eat sweets that might have gelatin in. Oh, really? She's full on. But, she, and, but she's very charming, but she's not evangelical. She doesn't mind us doing it, but she Amazing. won't have it herself. And she just decided one day. Really? I think she might be the Dalai Lama. <laughs> just came out of the blue one day. You know, I don't want to eat anything that walks beside us. Serious. Or swims. Amazing. How old is she? She's now 13. 13. A lovely young woman. Um, Gordon, I wish I could say it'd been fun having you here, but <laughs> as always, it's a bit like being lectured at. Right. Really? Well, don't blanch your tomatoes, take your biscuits out of the <laughs> You know, he's a wrong. bully, really. He's a, he's a bully. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway through, you know, when we're talking, I thought, that's a great idea. I had a great idea for a show. Why don't we have an idea like Cook Idol, where he's in the kitchen teaching people to cook? And I thought, Oh, he's done it. <laughs> uh, do you resent the fact, or not resent, but uh, do you regret the fact that you didn't do another series of um, Hell's Kitchen? Uh, but the thought of being in a kitchen again with Edwina Co for two weeks, no chance. <laughs> um, no, I... Um an amazing time. I didn't actually see it as running a show. I just ran a restaurant for two weeks. Yeah. Um, really enjoyed the stuff in the States. Uh, highly productive. Really good. It's showing now um, out there on Fox. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy Kitchen Nightmares. and uh, Kitchen Kitchen. Nightmares is a great show. <laughs> Can I just ask you, you don't have to answer, was Edwina Curry as good in bed as you'd hope? <laughs> <laughs> That's a yes. I That's a yes, yes, I think. <laughs> I think you know a lot more about Ladies' Fingers than I do. Here we go. <laughs> oh, and me and OBE. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> who'd have thought it? Gordon, lovely to see you again. Thank you, guys. Uh, the series is great. I'm enjoying every week. I'm looking forward. Is it next week the one where they have a portrait of me in the restaurant? Who is the you? I can't email this. They've got a picture of someone who looks like you. That's in the right, restaurant. yes. It was supposed to be Oscar Wilde, but. Uh... <laughs> Another dandy with long hair and uh, one who's actually got something to say for himself. Gordon, lovely to see you again. Good luck with the rest of the Thank series. Uh, Gordon Ramsay's book makes it easy. He's out now. We'll have a copy at home. It's fabulous. And the DVD really helps you through it all. But it's a, it's a great starter book, really, as much as anything. Yes, exactly that. Um, but it gets you where you want to go. Gordon, great to see you again. Take, Take care. care. Thank you, guys.